Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we are looking at the UD4L Utility Dropship, or Cheyenne as it's called. So this is another one of these ships which has a transformation mechanic where it will fold out some arms and will unleash those rocket pods you can see just over there. In fact, I shall do it right now because it's a pretty nice thing to watch. So pressing number two on this, We'll fold out the wings on both sides, and voila, you're now ready to shoot the pesky aliens which seem to have taken over this area. And a weird wall of them is over here, which creates quite a nice shadow. Anyway, back to the ship. This is a utility dropship that is basically there for you to transport goods, explore areas, and to simply blast your enemies, or aliens in this case, and... That's about it. It's entirely vanilla, it does use some of the DLC packs, such as the cockpit, which is sitting right there, so if you don't have it, you'll have an empty gap there. So, pressing F10 and finding it, it is... Dup, 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 there it is. This thing weighs in at 2,175 small blocks. And you can see that it does require the DLC, which is the decorative block DLC. So at the very front here, we've got our regular Space Engineers cockpit, and right behind it, we have got the DLC cockpit. If you do not own the decorative DLC block pack, you will simply have a gap there and can be easily filled in with the rover cockpit off the workshop. In front of our regular cockpit, we've got a Gatling gun, one of many on this ship, and that's been housed around by a nice little half slope block and some rounded armor blocks. Coming around the side, we can see the spotlights, two on both sides to blind the aliens if they get too close. And below that, we've got some fancy landing gear. So these landing gears are not the traditional ones, although we do have a traditional one in the dead center if you did want to lock yourself onto a platform. But these ones just allow you to blop down onto a surface without having to lock yourself in place or risk auto-locking in place, and you can take off if you need to. The middle landing gear is also used to transport goods. So if you have a cargo container, you need to be from one place to another. That is how you'd connect it up and move it along. We also have a camera underneath there, which is how the secondary pilot is going to view forwards and can control this Gatling gun right here, in case you are busy looking at something else. Moving around the side, we've got some more fancy block work using what I believe is the clean skin. We've got some blast or edges there, just in case you misfire with the rocket, and some more sloped armoured blocks. Coming around to here, we've got some more blast door parts with the carbon fibre skin, and behind that, we've got some thrusters, yes, just a few thrusters, they are kind of dangerous where they're sitting, but never mind. Yes, moving around the side, we can see one of our first arms that is going to deploy, which contains three rocket launchers. It's the same on both sides, so I won't bother going to the opposite side. Now, these little rocket launcher arms, if I just come up to here and deploy them, will fold out and allow you to shoot. They then form a vertical line to shoot normally. You can easily access them to reload them if you're in survival mode, and they are just connected up by a rotor. Moving along to this side there, let me just go and put them back in place. There we are. The wings will tuck down, and your Gatling guns and two of the reloadable rocket launchers, or two ends of the reloadable rocket launchers, will be hidden away by some blocks. So you have to be quite careful with the ship to make sure you don't accidentally start firing and damage your own ship. Yes, I'll just redeploy them once again. Oops, that's a gun. I've kind of lost where the button is. There it is. And they'll open up. And then we've got our reloadable rocket launchers. And on top are Gatling guns in case you need to blast a large target. Then coming around here, we can sort of see behind that there was a small little timer block in there, which is how this thing is going to fold in and out constantly so they don't clap into each other. But on the top, where they are folded in, we can see they're just held together by some rotors, which is quite nice, and a small little piston there, just to keep it raised off the surface so it doesn't damage them. We also have the blast door blocks on here, just to make sure they're nice and strong, because these things do tend to clang into them, so there's a good chance they'll break if they are regular steel blocks. Then coming around to the back of the ship, we've got some fancy block work here. Unfortunately, this doesn't open up, you do have to go underneath it. I was expecting it to be another one of these sliding doors where it'll just move across, but that's not the case with this ship. So we've got some nice lot of protection along the side there with the blast door parts, because this is where we're going to go down and underneath, 
and of course the thrusters, how they're going to be protected. Moving across from that, we got our rear landing gear, which you just like the front ones, but it's just raised up a little bit with the isn't attached onto it. On both sides we've got our parachutes which can be deployed if you're losing altitude, your power is gone or whatnot so you can just use them. And then moving towards the back of the ship, some more fancy block work with some more atmospheric thrusters. This ship does feature both atmospheric and hydrogen thrusters so you're pretty good in all places. At the very back we've got some blinking lights followed by some green and red. Yeah, so we can always see where this is in the dark. It's just rather nice, isn't it? The wings at the back here have been angled via the sloped blocks. Going up and down, quite nice. I was originally thinking it was on via a rotor, but no, it's just the plain sloped blocks. It's a lovely design, and I do like how this has been set up, but it does worry me how these fold in, because it's like, clunk, clunk. Yes, yeah, so I'm kind of worried about that going to break if I do it quite a lot, but yes, I'll just leave them closed for now. Coming down and underneath where this landing gear drops down, we do have a small way to poke inside. Now you can't sit on some of these seats because they have been placed inside another block. We can sit on this seat here and then just look around at some of the LCD screens. If I turn off my light, it's pretty bright in here, but we can see all the thrusters going around. We've got some red lights. We've got conveyors followed by some white lights and then we can see an area where we can access the cockpit at the front. We've got an LCD screens on here, these are just static images of a map of some other stuff, I'm not too sure what that is. And then on the opposite side we have nothing because the chair is in the way. If I was to come further to the front we have two more chairs which we cannot sit in, or at least I wasn't able to force my character into these seats. But behind it we've got our cargo container, a survival kit to respawn on, and a sensor which just goes bloop, 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 when you go near it. I'll get into my character, a drop down here, and you probably heard that but I'm not too sure what is actually activating. Yes we can heal on there, we've got our seat, we can access the cargo containers, so we can access this seat just by standing on the ground, then we can look around here, it's all good, and then if I was to hop out, you do sometimes get forced onto the ceiling, but at least that's a good way to go, because then you're boots were just magnetically locked to it and you don't risk just falling off and dying. But it's a great design isn't it? It looks nice when it's all tucked up, it kind of reminds me of something out of Elite Dangerous. I want to say the Alliance Chieftain but mm, I haven't actually looked at that ship for a while. But yes, it sort of reminds me of that game. But anyway, getting into the actual cockpits, let's go into this one first. So this is the DLC cockpit, we've got a few options. So coming along here, we've got our survival kit that we can toggle on and off. We've got our parachutes, we've got our light, we've got our drop assistance. So if you want to drop down faster, that's how you can do it. We've got our distress beacon, we've got our little antenna which displays our name. We have a camera, yes, we can view the camera which will view straight forward underneath the main cockpit. And then we can press 8 to shoot the Gatling gun forwards. So that's one way your co-pilot can help in combat. In the main cockpit, yes, we've got quite a few options to be going through. So tab number one, we got our reactor which we can turn on and off. And we also have a battery that we can turn on and off. Now with the reactor turned off and the battery just on, in fact let me just turn it off, you can fly around but you are maxing out the power. So you do kind of have to be quite careful when flying it like that. Putting reactor on, we have no issues. So number three and number four are for some of the exterior and interior lights. And then we have number five, I will see get rid of the annoying signals, press number 5, we'll drop down our fake landing gear. Yes, these things are called the landing skids, so we just drop down here, boosh. We're a little bit bouncy, if I could just get the camera to stop going into cinematic view. Yes, it's a, it's quite a nice thing. The blocks don't really get too damaged and you can just sort of lump them down. Anyway, we can press 5 to retract them back and press number 6 to put down the landing gear. Now this landing gear is called the docking latch, which is how we're going to either dock or connect us up to a cargo container. And then if we get close enough to the ground, we can press number 7 and lock ourselves in place. Which is where you can then press number 5 if you want to then just deploy them down so it doesn't look odd. Let's just go and retract them back and continue on. 
So number eight is our distress signal and number nine is the antenna from the second cockpit. And then on number two, we got some more fancier options. Number one is the camera which faces forwards. And then if I come out of the camera and look forwards, we can deploy our rockets. We do get kind of wobbled around a bit, but it does sort of, sort of go back to how it was. And once they are ready, we can press number three to undeploy them. We can then press number four to fire the single galley gun at the front like our co-pilot can, or we can press number five and mouse click to fire all of them. Then we have number six, which is our rocket launchers right there. So there we are. Sort of takes a little bit of time for the script to kick in, but they do go on a one, two, three, four pattern. Then number seven is the reloadable rocket launchers on our little deployable weapon part. So there's that. And then number eight will fire everything until you turn it off. So there's that. Number nine is to deploy the parachutes, but I want to keep them closed for the moment. On tab number three, we have got our survival kit to turn it on and off. Our atmospheric thrusters, which we can turn off, but unfortunately we need to have them turned on on this planet. We can then turn the hydrogen thrusters off, which gives us a... That seems to... That doesn't make sense, does it? So having the hydrogen thrusters turned off drains more power. Interesting. And then number four, we have our drop assist, which we can turn on and off. Not too sure what that actually does, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Number five is to turn the spotlights on and off. And then we have our thruster forwards. So this is our vanilla cruise control without a script. So I can just turn them on and keep going forwards. Let's now just go ahead and stop this. There we are. And it's time to shoot some of these aliens I've set up. So we've got our rockets, we've got our galley guns. Let's just shoot the galley guns forwards. So there we are, we can use the camera underneath. We can just aim forwards and just mow down. Look at that. I never realized they must have updated that. That doesn't look right, does it? Leaving that pattern. Anyway, we then used our rocket launcher to shoot that poor alien over there. I think it's dead. Then we can come across to this massive line of aliens and fire all of them at once. Yes, look at all the aliens die. There we are, problem solved. I don't know why they had so much trouble in the movies. You just have to deploy this ship and blast them with rockets. Oh, but this one survives. Do we let him live? I think I might just ram him. Goodbye, alien. There we are. Oh, hold, hold on a minute. He did more damage to me. That's not right. How dare he? And... There. That should be him gone. No. It appears he is the chosen one. The one who appears in the movies. He's a lot more resilient than, well, everything else. And I don't have the Gatling gun anymore. Oh. Wow, he is really strong. He's able to stop this ship in his tracks. Anyway, let's just go put that back. And in fact, I might have to spawn in a new ship. So let me just go and spawn in this. There we are. So now for a thruster test, means I've got that all out of the way. Going forwards, it's relatively fast. It's quite slow going. Oh, that's where all the rest of the aliens went. Yes, it's quite slow starting up, but once you get going, you get quite a lot of speed. Stopping is pretty good as well. Going left. Going left is quite slow and going right will be exactly the same. And then going backwards, going backwards seems like it's better than going forwards. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's better than going forwards, so there's that. But yes, anyway, with that all done and out of the way, I believe that is it for this video. Let's go and deploy this once again and try and attack wherever that other one was. I believe it was somewhere. Somewhere around here. There it is. Let's go and deploy these once again. There is that. So down comes the rockets. I'm still amazed at how that doesn't just suddenly break as soon as it deploys. Guess we can then come across to here and start the blasting. That one.
Let's just keep shooting it. Oh, the smoke trails are gone because too many are active. And there's that. I ble oh, I just deployed the parachutes. And the other one has now gone. But we can keep shooting it. And uh, fly away. So anyway, this is the UD-4L Utility a Dropship. It's a lovely ship with nice deploying wings that, despite being scary when you actually deploy them, are actually pretty safe to use constantly, as I've been doing with a little bit of tests. So you can just keep doing that. And keep going. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.